questions on how to convert a box fan from AC wall outlet to DC power. And the video that I'm getting a lot of the questions from is when I reviewed the uh, China based MPPT charge controller for my solar box. So it took me a little while. I had to do a little more finishing for it because I've had that video out for at least a month now. And now that I have everything set up the way I wanted to, I can actually show you how I did it. I'm sure other people will figure out a different way, but let me show you how I did it and how I kept it fairly cheap. Okay, the first thing, of course, you're going to need is a box fan. doesn't matter if it works or not, the motor itself, because we're not going to use the original AC motor that came with it. So you actually only need three extra components. One is your DC outlet itself. To switch on over, cut off the AC cord, put the DC plug onto it. The second thing you're going to need is a DC motor. Now this one, you can find them usually a dime a dozen, especially from kids that don't like their electric scooters anymore. This came off of um, a little electric scooter like this picture, actually this exact same model, but a lot of them use this exact same motor. It is a 24 volt uh, 350 watt motor that we're running at 12 volts and it's actually believe it or not even at 12 volts more powerful than the original AC motor. I can actually spin this fan faster than it was stock. The third thing which I'm going to show you a picture of it right now but I have it hidden inside in the corner up top here is you're going to need a DC PWM motor controller and the reason being is the way you get three different speeds on an AC fan is there are two separate coils inside the AC motor. There's a smaller coil and a bigger coil. When you go on low speed, it energizes um, the small coil. When you go for medium speed, it energizes the big coil. When you go for high speed, it energizes both of them. Now this is where it gets a little interesting as well because believe it or not, the DC motor is more efficient and uses less power than the AC one. Reason being is in an AC motor there are no permanent magnets. There is the center section which constantly spins. Instead of having magnets on that, it's another coil. So you have to use extra power to energize that center coil to make an electromagnet. This way it will interact with the other outside coils, the small one and the big one, so you get that electromotive force and actually be able to turn. In a DC motor, like the one we're using now, it has one set of coils and that's it on the outside. And on the inside, it has magnets or vice versa, depending upon how they uh, design the motor. The, the um, coils might be on the inside and the magnets on the outside. But regardless, there's no way to control speed by having different sized coils. It's only one size coil and a bunch of permanent magnets. And since it has permanent magnets, we don't have to waste power to make an uh, electromagnet so that the motor will work. So that's why you need a PWM or pulse width modulation motor controller rated for the amperage of this motor. Uh, we'll get back to the uh, We'll get back to the motor controller in one second, but I just also wanted to explain the stock fan on high would pull about 50 watts measured with a kilowatt that you plug into the wall. With this one running it on high, thirty-five to thirty-seven watts total. That's it. So you you save 15 watts worth of power because you're not making an electromagnet. It's actually got physical magnets in the motor. So that's how you save a little bit of power at the same time. Okay, now for the motor controller. Um, here's the picture once again of it. It has to be rated for, for this motor and this application. A minimum of 5 amps. 10 amps is better. This motor controller is actually rated for 10 amps. And I found it on eBay. Believe it or not, I had to have it ordered directly from China, but it only cost uh, $10 shipped from Beijing, China. I could put the uh, list of the actual eBay listing on the descriptions down below. I'm not going to do that because usually they go bad within 90 days, and I plan on keeping this video up for a few years. 
So I'm going to put the basic specifications of this motor controller down in the description. So this way you can find it on eBay or Amazon or some other electronic source and you can find it. Um, and you have to have this PWM controller because otherwise if you just plug in the 12 volts you're not going to get any speed control and you're just going to have high speed all the time. Now one of the advantages of this one as well, it's infinite, infinitely variable. I can go all the way to off, instead of having just three settings, it's constant from low to faster than the stock fan. I mean, at faster, all the way up, we're fully 82 watts on a 350 watt motor. Oh, a little too slow. The only thing I have to do with this is the original knob so I can use it. I gotta put a little bit of glue in here because the shaft is a little bit thinner so it doesn't quite grip it. But I'll do that after I'm done making this video because I wanted to show you the uh, aftermarket switch if you want to, the potentiometer that comes with the PWM kit. Besides those three components, you just need a little bit of hardware, basically some screws and nuts so you can tie everything together. And I'm not exactly sure what this type of steel is called, but you can get it at Lowe's. Uh, it's basically formed into a U-shape. And it has two, two purposes. One is to mount the motor on the outside because it won't fit inside like, a, like the stock motor will. And the second reason is since the motor is actually outside the back of the fan, it makes the fan very back heavy. So it would tip over. These actually act as stands as well. So now the fan is very... Um, stable. I can turn it all the way up. It doesn't go anywhere. And there's a few pieces of hardware like a, t uh, a customized turnbuckle that I bought from Lowe's to adapt the reverse thread of the motor to a shaft that I can put into the actual blade itself. If I turn, turn it around and I'll stop it real quick. You can see I had to actually put the screw all the way through, and that's how I mounted it. You're, you might figure out a better way to mount it, but remember when you're messing with this, you want to get it as balanced as possible so it's not shaking around, and it doesn't end up shaking loose, and the fan blade comes off. Because even with this guard on, if that blade's spinning fast enough, it's going to go shooting somewhere if it comes loose. So be safety conscious, and make sure you have that mount it as balanced as possible as you can. This way you can get a lot of use out of it. So that's how you make a conversion from an AC to a DC fan. Find yourself a DC motor from an old scooter rated for at least a minimum of 100 watts but about 350. You'll never use all the power but it's nice to have a strong motor that you're not going to tax too hard. A 10 amp minimum uh, PWM charge controller and I forgot to mention this earlier you have to make sure when you go and buy your PWM controller that it's rated for at least 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz or higher. This one's rated for 25,000 hertz or 25 kilohertz. The reason why is because if it's below that, the PWM, you will physically hear it through the fan. And it gets extremely annoying because it's basically turning the fan on and off, on and off really quick. And you'll get this audible sound through it. Once you get it above 20,000 hertz, humans can't hear it. So this will allow the fan to run normal and you won't hear any of the PWM noise. Um, the other thing you need is the cigarette lighter adapter and a little couple pieces of hardware. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll get right back to you. Thank you.